I absolutely believe that's a great thing because what you prove is, despite every trick in the book, as Mark says, despite that, the power is truly in the hands of the voters. I mean, at, they have, at the end of the day, they have the say. They have the vote. You can overcome these huge swing areas. You can overcome these areas that look solid, that look formidable. Actually, when the voters engage and when they are out there, they've proven in 10, they've proven in 08, and quite frankly, they've proven in 1994, that when they engage, those pure R versus D kind of base numbers don't mean anything because the voters can engage and they will and they have several times here just recently proven that despite what appears to be an R seat or a D seat have come out and they've changed it. Uh, there's one last point about this though that at the risk of absolutely beating this horse into beyond death uh, the shame of that I, everything you said I agree with the shame is that the people who get beat in those surge elections are the ones in district like the one you currently represent, the one I currently represent, guys like Chet Edwards get beat. Guys who are in swing districts and therefore have a generally centrist record. They're the ones who are, are vulnerable in those surge elections, even though they're the ones, frankly, who probably better rep reflect the will of the majority of American voters who want us to have a centrist governing coalition. Uh, the guys who survive even those tidal wave elections like the ones we saw in 08 and 010 are the guys who are in districts that are so overwhelmingly stacked for their political party that they survive no matter what. And those are the ones who pull the political system toward the extremes. So that, that's, I, I, I don't know how to solve that problem, certainly not within the laws as they exist today, uh, but that's, that's a problem. Now, but there are races where you've had incumbents on both sides that had had very comfortable 10, 15, 20 point wins historically that got beat in 08 and in 10. So it's, yes, there are some marginal swing districts that get beat, absolutely. But there were some pretty entrenched um, uh, incumbents on both sides that have gotten beat under maps that, you know, you, you could argue um, were, we're you know, to solid, be you we're know. To be but again, the good thing is, is that that shows a participation. I don't know that uh, when the voters get to the, get to the polls, I mean, they are saying this is our preference. Did they change their mind? Is there a policy shift? Or is it as simple as you read your lines? That's a great question for the voter to ask. What happens? I know when you look at HD 52 and compare the 08 numbers to the 10 numbers, there's a huge swing amongst those that had voted Democrat and those that came over to vote for me in 10. Now, I can tell you that a large part of that was the decisions made and the policies made uh, by the person before me. That's, you, you can't argue what that looks like. When the Democrat Party chairman resigns his position and endorses me because he says the conservative Texas Democrats are gone, we're being led by a progressive nationalist Democrat Party, and we in Texas, Democrats in Texas, Williamson County, they've left us. When he does that and you see a huge swing in that area of Williamson County, that's a philosophical change the voters have had. That's something they're looking at and they're realizing, wait a minute, where do we now lie? Not R versus D, that's just a concern. I, but thing. you're making my point because that's in a district that had gone from R to D just two years earlier. So that it would go to D to R two years later is exactly my point. Folks in the center are the ones who are always at the whim of these surge election years. Yours you would, was a swing district, and it swung twice in two years. I don't know if you would call the incumbents that were there uh, moderate or swing. I mean, Maybe the incumbents not, that were but there, the, but the voters were are. not in the middle. <laughs> but, but but the point is, the voters are, and the voters swung that district twice in two years. That's not surprising. That happens in districts like that. It is less likely to happen after we adopt a map that makes your district a 60% Republican district because the Democratic voters in your district have less of a voice with their elected official because they have less of a capability, even in a surge year after this map is adopted, of taking you out of office. I think you do a great job for your district. But Thanks. there's <laughs> no question in my mind that this whole process is set up for each incumbent to have a safer district when the process is over than they had before. That's what redistricting but, is. But That's not what it's for. That's, and there are other laws that circumscribe the ability of politicians to just crassly perpetuate themselves in political office, as, like the Voting Rights Act. 
But for the most part, that's how politicians view the redistricting process, and that's what they're sitting around drawing maps to try to do. Well, because we're constitutionally told to do so. I mean, we're that, not I, constitutionally I, told to do that. How do you? We're I mean, constitutionally told to redraw them. To, to, to redraw them, yeah. And, and then it becomes an exercise in self-preservation. But we have been we have been constitutionally told to redraw the maps, and I think what we did in Williamson County was improve upon what was filed. Agreed. What but, we did, in but Williamson maybe County, not upon what was there before. If you're from the perspective of Democratic voters in Williamson County. Well, I don't know. When you look at... Which uh, there are some. Well, there are, there are some, absolutely. <laughs> but when you look at, um, you know, this past election, uh, you know, 57.5 kind of number, that's very different than a previous, you know, 48.9 number as, as far as what the uh, Republican candidates uh, received. Again, when you look at the voters of HD52, Williamson County, as an example, 57.5 percent is a, is, a, is a huge shift. It's a fundamental, I believe, a fundamental philosophical shift in what they were looking at and what they had seen the previous two years than it was candidate-based, than it was uh, lines. It simply wasn't lines that changed that. It wasn't lines that moved uh, 10 points. Right, there was but, a, the, there was a but if they shift again there. two years from now, which having shifted two years previously is eminently possible, you'd have to concede, now the lines make it very much harder for that shift to depose an incumbent. That's the, the whole point. And there's also a loss of population. That is, you, you can't argue it has to exist when you've got to shed That's 50, right, but what you're going to calculatedly do is lose as much of the population that might defeat you in the next election. I'm not a, criticizing you for it. This is the process we have. But that's what every politician is doing with the redistricting process right now, trying to, shi trying to shift out of their district the voters likely to vote against them. That's what they do. Who is in most danger this time of all the representatives we have uh, on the floor right now? Oh, the ones who are paired. I mean, the, yeah. the, you can make that list real quickly because That's there's right. a list of them who are actually in districts where they have to run against each other. And so there's a, uh, what is it, seven districts pair I Republicans? I think there's so eight. 14 I, Republicans? I, I, I think there's and eight. And one district that yeah. pairs Democrats. Yeah. And, That's uh, right. and so, um, so those, you know, you can look at the map and say, of these 16 people who are in the eight districts that pair incumbents, eight of them won't be back, right? And so, yeah, you, I mean, that's... That I, would say, I would say those, are the, those are the ones that unpleasant. are probably most, uh, yeah. most likely. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, why are they paired? There's some huge population shifts. There's a lot of other variables as to why it is the way it is. I mean, just, you can look at it, you can argue all day long on why it looks the way it looks. I mean, what we focused in on was Williamson County, we did burn it in Milam because the way the current map was. So as we were amending it, that's what we were looking at doing. Uh, again, number one priority was preserving our communities of interest, making sure our cities are whole. It's not an easy task. My district is slightly less Republican for it because we had to make sure that we weren't just cherry picking, that everything is whole, that every city is there together. Again, a slight exception to Georgetown, only because that's the way the domino effect works, but we, seven out of eight, I guess you could say. Um, that's the challenge, that's the task, to make certain that those communities of interest are, are preserved as well. You know what, uh, to get this away from the discussion about Republicans and Democrats, there, one of the things that people expected to happen with this redistricting was that this would be the first decade when the power in the Texas House shifted from rural to urban and suburban. So, and the reason is that population has moved Absolutely. from rural to urban Absolutely. and suburban. But maybe you understand this dynamic better than I do. I don't see that in the map because the pairings are in the rural, uh, are not in the rural districts for the most part. There's, I think, one, I think Land Troop, uh, is Land Troop paired? There is, there is a, there's a rural West Texas, there is a, uh, a Northeast Texas, but the other pairings become are urban. In, they're in Dallas uh, urban. and Houston. Because here's the shift. The shift in population wasn't just uh, rural to suburban. Yeah. It was urban to suburban. Yeah. If you look at the it's map, interesting. It's, it's fascinating. It's not what we thought it was going to be. Now, I don't know if that could have been drawn differently, right? And if maybe what's going on is rural still has so much power in the current legislature that they've managed to figure out a way to draw maps that don't pair all the rural members against each other. 